The federal government has postponed the planned partial closure of the portions of the Lagos Ibadan Expressway to September the 2nd, 2019. The federal controller of works, Lagos engineer uh, Adeta Molakuti, notes on Friday that the postponement was to enable effective traffic management plans and show sensitivity to Nigerians. It adds that the government and the construction company have reviewed the work plan and come up with a 2nd of September as a suitable date. The partial closure was initially expected to commence on Saturday, August the 3rd, to enable the construction company to work on a stretch of 1.4 kilometers between Burger and Kara Market here in Lagos. Now, the Islamic Movement of Nigeria, IMN, has filed a motion to challenge the prescription of a group by the federal government. A senior advocate of Nigeria, uh, San, and human rights activist, Mr. Femi Falano, filed the suit on behalf of the group on Friday at the Federal High Court in Abuja. The Shiite group asked the court to set aside the ex parte order made on July the 26th, prescribing IMN as a terrorist organization. They also want the courts to set aside the order restraining any of their members from participating in the activities of the group. The suit was predicated on four grounds, one of which the group said the order was made without jurisdiction as it was made against a non-Jewish body. According to it, the order is a breach of the fundamental human rights of all members of the IMN group to a fair hearing and freedom of association. However, no date or judge has been assigned to the suit. The federal government had obtained a prescription order against the IMN following a series of protests by the group in the federal capital territory, Abuja. Now, data feeds coming through all in one place simultaneously on all of our social media platforms. You can be a part of the show. Tweet at me at K-A-Y Alana using their hashtag State of the nation to be a part of the conversation. This is prime time in Lagos, Nigeria, and you're watching State of the Nation. I'm Kyrie Alayade and this is State of the Nation. We invite you to be a part of the show. Use the hashtag State of the Nation and tweet also at me at K-A-Y Alayade. Your thoughts are welcome and appreciated on the subjects we're about to discuss tonight. Now, let's get to it. The federal government has eventually postponed the planned partial closure of the portions of the lagos Baran Expressway to September the 2nd, 2019. Uh, uh, work on the road was to begin on Saturday, 3rd of August, but following widespread condemnation uh, by Nigerians accusing the federal government of insensitivity uh, to the people, the plant closure has been postponed by another four weeks. The federal controller of works, Lagos, engineer Adida Molakuti, noted on Friday that the postponement was to ensure effective traffic management plan and show sensitivity to Nigerians. So to discuss the planned closure, because uh, that uh, construction work still has to go on, uh, to discuss that closure and the socioeconomic impact of that on Nigerians. We have three gentlemen in the studio tonight uh, to look at the 
various aspects uh, of that matter. We have Mr. Clement Olajele, who is the FRSC Sector Commander in Ogun State, and he's right beside me here. Thank you very much for joining us. All right, thank you. We also have uh, Mr. Patrick Adenusi, his Director, Safety Beyond Borders. Thank you, sir, for joining us tonight. Thank you very much, Kaede. All right, so in the middle of the three gentlemen there is uh, Mr. Stanley Ikechuku, his Director of Field Research, SBM Intelligence Services. Thank you uh, for being part of this conversation. This is a very critical conversation because the Lagos Ibadan Expressway is considered uh, as the most, uh, is the busiest, most plied uh, stretch of roads in sub Saharan Africa. And so, economy uh, of not just Nigeria, but the sub region is in some way tied to this. Can you tell us, uh, uh, Mr. Clement Oladili, how did we get to a situation where we're closing this and there is so much outcry? Yeah, once again, good evening, viewers. I think I'm not sure is a total closure of the highway. Nobody can afford to close the highway now. Yes. yes. Because when you, you rightly said it, we do, like in my state, where I work, I'm privileged to work in state, we do on the average, every day, 35,000 vehicles flying the highways in Ogun state. And the 5,000 of them are along the Lagos Southern Express Road. So it's critical that makes it to be the easiest corridor in the whole of Africa. So there's no way you can close the, 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 the moment you close the, the entire corridor, that means that you shorten the economy of the country. And, but over time, we know that this corridor has not attracted a, a, enough attention. So, and we've seen commitment on the part of government that are trying to do it. I know it's the same thing all over the world where constructions are being done. There's going to be discomfort. It's going to affect traffic. It's going to affect even the, the, the people that are living within the, along the corridor. So, and usually the, the best practice is you look for alternate corridors for people to use and you shut down the whole road so that you can quickly complete the rehabilitation and open it up to traffic and also to ensure that the construction workers, they are also safe because they are members of our family. But since we don't have the luxury as it were to have alternate corridors that we can afford to shut down the entire Lagos to Banana Express because of the volume of traffic it carries, then we have, we have no other choice than to, while construction is going on, alongside we can also do, allow vehicles to, to move. And that is where we have come to. So but for us in FRAC, we are ready, we are prepared. And we've asked ourselves a critical question. The first question is that, will there be partial closure of the road? Yes. Will there be, are people aware that there's going to be partial closure? Yes. If there's partial closure of the road, will people be affected? Will traffic be impaired? Yes. Will people sleep on the corridor? I'm not sure. Why? Because we're ready. We're prepared. Just to make sure that people can commute day, night to get to their destination. Mark you, if the road is completed, it's a plus to the government, it's a plus to all of us. Then it becomes easier for everybody to move from one point to another. All right, you, you make a very critical point here, and uh, that's the fact that, yes, it will come at a cost. There has to be some pain. I don't think Nigerians have any issue with that pain. Uh, what has come out in this matter particularly is the fact that it appeared that there was no uh, comprehensive stakeholder engagement in all of this. And you see that in the statement that was released today, uh, that, okay, we are postponing this by another four weeks to, to have a robust engagement. How do you respond to that? No, even even in, uh, in, in making policy at our government or, or private organizations, there is no way you will not be flexible. You cannot always be very rigid. Uh, it's not as if maybe people are not, uh, not, not aware. We are conscious also of the fact that it coincided with some other programs, uh, religious, social, and also uh, even private activities. And then we also know that there's going to be heightened vehicular movement. But the most important thing is that the decision has been taken. I, I don't think we'll have to dwell on why, what the story is. But yeah. the most important thing is that we just have to move on. All right, great. Uh, Mr. Adenusi, what should, what should be the... Uh, the strategy, 
what is the, what should have been done? How should the stakeholder management have been handled? Give us a sense of timeline. For instance, this is a very humongous project. How should the government have approached this in such a way that there is no, uh, we pick a date, there is outcry, we extend it. Uh, what should have happened? How many weeks, how many months before this closure and this postponement that we are seeing should we have seen in a normal circumstance? Yeah, well, <clears throat> thank you. Um, good evening, um, viewers, uh, once again. Uh, the construction, for example, started a couple of years ago. And uh, we all know that the Lagos Ibadan Expressway is a major road in this country, which suffered neglect for several years. And the repair process eventually started. The process became epileptic at a point. <clears throat> but we're at a point right now where, unlike before, you just wake up and see that the road has been diverted. Mm. There was notice to say that from August the 3rd, there will be partial closure of one lane and traffic is going to be diverted onto the other lane wherein the traffic will now be shared. Now, I think um, in terms of engagement, The, the, I think the engagement was in order that the, there was even a set date to the fact that, okay, the closure is going to take effect from this point for two, three, four months thereabout. And because of the engagement, they were able to at least talk to us. I think the outcry is selfish. Because the ultimate benefactor of the process are the people. So the outcry against the fact that, oh, why should the road be closed now? Ah, we don't think it should be closed. If we sit down in this country in January and say we are going to close the road in June, by the time it is 24 hours to the closure, you, people will talk. There is nothing that will happen that someone is not going to make a statement. Mm. But we look at the the, 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 we, we take an extra at, at it, okay, is what effect does this have on the people, the economy, the country itself? All right, now that you have mentioned the issue of economy, this road is going to be um, eventually, uh, that project is going to take four months. Can you help us with the economic impact of that closure? Yes, we know it's going to uh, take four months, but can you help us with a sense of the impact. Good evening, viewers. You will agree with me that um, the import, import aspect of a business in, in Nigeria is 70% of it is done in Lagos. And these goods move from Lagos down to every other part of the country. That road is very, very important to the business community. Though at the moment, I, I really cannot give you a figure because um, our, data, um, our data collection is, is, um, is, is nothing to write home about yet. So, but looking at the number of vehicles that go through that road, you can point at what we should expect and the, what is going to cost um, the business community and um, commuters in general. Mm. All right. Uh, so, we have decided to postpone this under four weeks. Eventually, it's going to come. In that four weeks, can you help us with what we are going to be doing? in the next four weeks to prepare for this uh, partial closure? Uh, it's, it's to keep everybody abreast that we have an extension now, and then to prepare for it. And uh, for us, like I said in FRC, we are ready, we are prepared. And uh, what we have done is that immediately we networked and we noticed also that, okay, there's an extension. We've gone back to our drawing board again to sync it with our grand strategy. And we just continue to engage members of the public, all the critical stakeholders, and just assure members of the motoring public that they were there to ensure that they are right home safely. All right, uh, Mr. Oladili, I, I want you to talk about the interagency um, interactions that we are going to see 
on this road when eventually this goes on. Give me uh, put in account uh, issue of security, issue of congestion, and and sundry matters. I, I think even before this time, since uh, the the comments the, the the construction of the road, because this is not the first time that we are seeing this. We have a uh, institutional memory. We we have experience to latch from. We the about two years ago, there was a similar incident that happened on, on the, uh, around the Shagam interchange. Also, the Long Bridge, is, that one is recent. So it's the, same, uh, it's the same thing that's going to happen. So I want to assure members of the public that there's no need to panic. We've been doing this together with all the critical stakeholders. We have a platform. We meet regularly as a rule. And then we ensure that the, even the communities en route, we've brought them on board to see that we can allay their fears, and to assure them that uh, we will we'll not allow them to be stranded. Instead of them to be stranded, we will ensure that we are on the, on the highway. And I see from the feedback we get from the communities that they're talking about safety, they're talking about security, especially in the night. And I think uh, the construction companies, they have the feedback also, and that's why they provided the lightning to ensure that the whole place is well lit, and they can also walk late into the, into the night. So, of the, the construction work. And we have a collaboration with the sister I'm carrying security agencies to ensure that they give us a security backup. And as long as they're there with us, we will remain on the highway to make sure that people can move uh, without uh, any hindrance. All right. so, uh, they've, they've been concerned about the, yes, the government has said there are alternative routes, but there are concerns about the uh, the state of these alternative routes. We have Ikorodu Shagamu, Epe Ajaya, Ijebode, Ota, Itori, Isheri, Ojodu, Berga. Let me ask you, are they adequate alternative routes? What else should the government do? There, there, there are adequate alternative routes, but the state of those alternatives are the issue. Um, Ikorodu, Shagam, between Ikorodu and Shagam, there are portions that are actually in deplorable state. Between Ikorodu and Ijebode, through Itoki, it, that is a little better, but the most um, that people who are going to the eastern part of the country could actually also make use of would have been the Ekpe cor corridor. Between Lagos and Ekpe, there are failed portions now between Ekbe and Ijebode is in sorry state. Now, let me, let me say something about this um, diversion and the construction area. What we actually have is not an issue with the road. It is the people. Not once have we, as a people, used two lanes as two lanes. There were times in this country where we only had two lane roads that it is counter flow and traffic was moving. The discipline at that point in time of our nation, national life was very high. But today, a three lane road, we want to convert it into five lanes. So movement will be slow. Diversion from one lane to the other and two lanes at both ends. If we use the road the way the road should be used, we shouldn't even have any issue at all. Are you saying with the deplorable states of these roads, um, it's unexpected that these things wouldn't happen? Yeah, we, we already, you see, what, one of the things that leads to congestion is the fact that the roads are not, not even, so you're going to get there and slow down, so there will be traffic build, build up, and miscreant can now just miss well, that's adequate that enough for congestion. But, you see, on the Lagos Ibadan Expressway in question now, this, the, the proposed diversion, if we use the road the way roads should be used, there should be no reason for fear at all. That's what I'm saying. The alternates are not in good state. If the alternative were in good state, then Lagos Ibadan could be closed 100%. But you know what? One of the things that government should have done proud to this time was not to wait for all of those roads to collapse at the same time. Lagos Ibadan is being rehabilitated. Thank God for that, using the Nigerian language. But the people need to be fixed. 
just as the way is, the roads are being fixed. Mr. Kechuk, could you agree with him? Yeah, I, I totally agree with him because uh, I think as a people we have um, an orientation problem. You get there's no you see people use the road as if there there are no laws and order. Like you said, two lanes is supposed to go as two lanes, but you see people making three, four, five lanes, thereby causing extra congestion on the road. And it's gonna affect everybody, it's gonna affect businesses, it's gonna affect people traveling. So I think orientation, we need to we need to really go back and educate people on how to use the road properly. All right, let me let me come back to you. Do you think uh, that the federal government or governments at all levels have done adequately well in uh, orientating the people? Well, I will tell you no, three hundred percent. If I give you the picture of what we lose in Lagos alone, in terms in, as a result of the fact that we have not been spoken to, I will blow your mind. For example, like I said, there is no five lanes, there is no six or seven lane road anywhere in this country. When you go to the Lekki Corridor in the morning or around this time, peak period, everybody is going back home, go check. You will, you, will, you will see eight lanes on a three lane road. So movement will be slow. A 15 minutes journey will now become two hours. If 100,000 vehic 100, vehicles, are trapped in traffic daily in Lagos as a result of congestion. And each of those vehicles spends a thousand naira extra fuel above what we should spend. That's 100 million naira wasted every day. In five days, it's 500 million. And in one month, it's two billion naira. All right. Thank you very much for that. We have less than a minute to go. Uh, could you tell us what would you like to tell Nigerians? How should they approach uh, the partial closure? What would you like them to know? You have a chance for orientation now. I, I, I think uh, it's, it's easy. The most important thing is that the road is undergoing rehabilitation. And it's for whose good? It's for all of us. So it's like a, 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 a pregnant woman in the labor room. The pains will be severe, but after bearing a child, the pains will cease. And that's exactly what's going to happen. So just approach it with caution and uh, cooperate with us, cooperate with government. Is government is doing it for our good, so we very soon it will be over, and then all of us will use the road without uh, hazards. All right, thank you very much. much. That's how it's been, gentlemen. Uh, I have had in the studio with me, uh, Mr. Clement Oladili, FRSC Sector Commander, Ogun State, Patrick Adenusi, Director, Safety Beyond Borders, and Mr. Stanley Ikechuku, Director, Field Research. SBM Intelligence Services. We've been discussing uh, the planned partial closure uh, by the federal government of portions of the Lagos Baron Expressway for the purpose of rehabilitation. And you've heard it all. Let us cooperate with the federal government in giving us better roads. And that's how it's been on the program State of the Nation tonight. I'm Kaya Alayade. Thank you for watching.